During the observation of the visual chaos, that is called aura in esotericism, you may have been perceiving as a scanning through your visual field. Layers of gleams that may resemble clouds or neon lights like that pass through the visual field in rhythm and good regular waves. Or that stands as a whitish ball, gray, moving in your field of vision. This is the third phase of the phosphine called the diffuse glow or esoteric perception of the etheric body. Let's investigate why. This diffuse glow has three very amazing properties. It allows seeing objects in the dark. It is transmissible by telepathy. It is outside the brain and photographable. It allows seeing objects in the dark. It happens that some people, without having first made the phosphine, at bedtime, after turning off the light, perceive the room like if the light was still turned on, as if all objects were surrounded by a luminosity. Some people find it easier than others to produce the diffuse glow. With an experienced phosphonist, who practices rhythmophosphonism exercises, its diffuse glow will be more abundant. Even in darkness with a blindfold, if we pass a circular object in front of him, he will be perfectly capable of distinguishing the circular shape from that of a rectangular object like a book. very transmissible telepathically. In the event of visions during this phase of diffuse glow, it is very easy for a person next to capture the vision we have seen. It is the case for the African sorcerer who manages to convey his visions, Nostradamus who transmitted his vision to Catherine of Medici. And finally, the diffuse glow is external to the brain and photographable. You will find all this at length in the book Exploration of the Brain by the Oscillations of the Double Phosphines. Finally, I would add that this diffuse glow is the bridge that allows us to perceive the invisible worlds. Thanks to the diffuse glow, we can have access to plants that the physical eye cannot perceive. Let's make some very simple experiments for everyone to better understand what the diffuse glow is. Some experiments of physical phosphovision. Place a person standing against a wall and watch this person fixing a few centimeters above his head. Keep staring blankly into space by observing two to three centimeters above his head. Shortly after, you will see appearing a luminous halo around his head and enveloping part of his shoulders. Now, if you ask that person to think of his feet or his shoes, you will notice that this light will not have the same intensity as if you ask him to think of his hair, and the light will even be different if you ask that person to think of heaven, of a galaxy. Or, even better, if you ask him to pray deep down inside himself. The more this person will raise his thoughts, the brighter will be the light. So, obviously, some will say that this brightness can be seen around objects, and it's true that if I look at this object after a while, I'll collect a brightness. 
a light that appears fluctuating around the object. But this light is always the same, as if I look at an animal, even if I look at a plant. For example, if I stare at the leaf of a tree, this light will always be equal to itself, while for a human being, this brightness will greatly depend of his psychological condition and the nature of his thoughts. Now, if you ask that person to squat very quickly, you will see that the brightness of its silhouette will remain marked in your visual field. Brightness will be molded around the image I have of this person and it will take a little while for the light to evaporate and or descend towards the person who squatted. If I look at my partner, I place my eyes a few centimeters above his head, I see this brightness and I can see what is his psychological mindset at that very moment. My visual chaos will also get organized and I could also infer certain things depending on the capacities that I would have developed either a psychological or therapeutic realms and what interests us in this organization of my visual chaos is that images that may belong to key moments in the life of this person can come. To sum up we observe the same phenomenon for objects as for living beings. But this is actually a very complex phenomenon of phosphenic perception for which we find the molding property of the phosphine around the body or the object. This luminous halo is a subjective perception, that layer physical perception. But it is a psychic phenomenon since, according to the person's thoughts, will influence the intensity and brightness of my halo that just sets in my visual field. It's a bit like my brain was like a radar that emits a wave that is reflected on the person I observe and soon there is a whole organization that's setting in my field, but not only because, as Dr. Lefebvre has shown, that brightness, called diffuse glow, is a brain external property because it can be photographed and allows to see objects that pass through it in the dark. So, here's a little experiment you can do with a friend. You ask this friend, this time not to put himself back against a wall, but in front of a window on a sunny day. You gaze at him, you can just watch him, and after a minute you ask your friend to leave the window and there you will have the vision of this friend but in a ghostly way. You can increase this impression of ghostly perception of the person if instead of sitting and watching your subject close to the window you lie yourself on the ground. It is a condition that seemingly favors this ghostly perception. We can now understand that in ancient times, in the castles, where brightness passed through half-open doors or windows and life was not as hectic as in our time, where people were taking their time to move about, then if we watch someone in a hallway, after that person is gone, we still have the impression, that was more specifically a retinal impression, that his ghostly appearance was still present. Tracing of this impression remains in the visual field and that impression will be even stronger if in darkness and can be triggered outside the observation even several hours later. Here are some explanations of this phenomenon of diffuse glow. 